value compression. So this video is primarily a color mixing demonstration. And I, I brought in these Claude Monet paintings because I wanted to give a brief introduction. Now, value compression is a, is a color strategy where you purposely limit the range of values that you're using. Usually it's in a specific passage rather than talking about it like in, in the whole painting. Like these Monet paintings, both of them, they have a full range of values. And, and we'll be talking more about value and value strategy in, in other videos, but you could look at either one of these Monet paintings we're going to talk about here, the cathedrals, and you can see that they're, they're, they're structured on three values. So there's a dark, there's a middle, there's a light. And, but what I want to bring our attention to is individual passages. So in this first painting, we have the front door of the cathedral, and then we have a detailed shot coming up later of that really dark part. But let's talk about the, the front door. So if we're just looking at the area of the front door, uh, the cathedral facade in this painting is in the dark, right? We don't know where the sun is, but it's probably on the other side. So if the entire facade is in the dark, Monet is looking at it and he doesn't have a lot to go on in terms of lights and darks. He has a compressed range that he's seeing. So if you don't know how to take advantage of a situation where there are very few changes in value, your paintings are going to be extremely boring. And that's what this video is about, setting you up with a limited range of values or maybe just one, and then being able to mix multiple colors that you can put in there. And the, the front door here is a great example of that. It's an absolutely gorgeous passage where we have this matrix of just look at the oranges, forget about the blues. How many in the, 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 the top part of the door where we have that, that orange shape, how many different oranges and reds and yellows and purples and really dull blues are in there? You start to lose track uh, if you're counting you're going to run out of fingers and toes really, really fast. And then you can factor in some of those blues. And not all the values are the same, to be fair. But they're very, very close together. And when you back up and look at this image, all this information just reads beautifully. So he's figured out a way to convey a ton of information in drawing terms where he's almost doing no drawing that we would recognize as drawing. And he's putting it all together in just this, uh, this really beautiful passage. And then the, the next detail shot we have is the, is the stained glass window above the, the middle. And it's the same thing, but it's in the dark. And just look at the range of color that he gets in the dark. And then we move to the next image, which is the opposite of the first image where the facade is in the light. So the facade is, is in full sun. And then we have the, the big value of the sky. And then we have the shadow at the bottom, which I would argue are the same value. So that's interesting. It basically works out to make this painting a two value painting instead of three. So it's going to be a little bit flatter than the first one. But all the sunlit area is basically one or two very, very compressed values. But look at the range of hue that he brings in. So the, the conclusion that we want, that I want to direct you towards, is that if you can't have a passage where you have a range of value, that means that your values are going to necessarily always be simple. And these Monet pictures are awesome examples of keeping your values super simple. If your values can't be complex, 
you need something to be complex. Monet figured out very quickly that hue is the thing that you need to be complicated. Value is the thing you need to be simple. So the, the mixing demo that's coming up is going to show you how to take a single hue and complicate it in a, a relatively straightforward way. But what you want to do is look at the mixing demo, not for literally what I'm showing you, but for the potential that exists if you start combining hues. And instead of just having yellow and then doing a bunch of versions of yellow, what if you did the same thing at the same value for every color on your palette? The potential that you're going to start to be able to see here is just mind boggling. And if you can harness just a tiny bit of it, you're going to end up with something really, really special. So without further ado, the mixing demo starts in three, two. So we're talking about value compression in this video. So I have my palette out here. I have some white. I have some black. I'm going to mix up some values and talk about what compression is and then I'm going to grab some colors and, and show you how to create color complexity within a very tight value scheme. So in my mind what I'm setting up here is I'm going to do three values that are very close that are lighter, three values that are close that are middle, three values that are darker. And then when we're doing projects that are based on this, if you're in my class, we're going to choose a range of three and make a painting only using those three values. So I'm going to start with my lighter colors. Okay, so we have from white to black, we have three lights, we have three middles, and we have three darks. Now, when you're compressing your values, what you're doing is you're, you're basically taking the value spectrum and you're like, you're only using a small section. So when we go and make our paintings, we're gonna choose either these three, these three, or these three. Now, if you wanna get cute and go with like this one, this one, and this one, that's up to you, but when you, when you bring your values together, it causes a whole bunch of different things to happen in your painting. It makes the picture a little bit flatter, it makes space harder to develop, but it also puts a lot more emphasis on the color choices that you make. And if, if you're interested in improving the way that you think about and use color, compression exercises are really, really good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mix up some colors that are these values, and I'm going to show you how to make variations on them. All right, so we have a compressed palette out here already ready to go. And what I'm going to do is set up a color. I just randomly chose a yellow. This is a chrome yellow, chrome yellow light. So it's, it's fairly light to begin with, and I need a bunch of it. Now the question is, which of these values is this the same as? And that's pretty much the same as the first one. So if we're going to try and keep this color the same value, and then run as many variations on it as we can, the first, we, there's a bunch of different ways we can do that, but the, the easiest way to think about it is to figure out which colors you want to use, make them all the same value, and then start plugging them in. So I have a bunch of colors that are ready to go, and I'm just going to add white to them so that they're all the same value as that value right there. That was yellow ochre. This is probably going to look very similar. This is uh, Armenian gold ochre. This 
sap green. Get that green out of there, it's going to cause trouble. Ultramarine blue. This is Prussian blue. Told you that green was going to be trouble. It probably doesn't matter. The colors don't have to be pure. We're just trying to get their values the same. This is a mixture of several colors. Just try and get its value right. Orange Molly date. This is Pozzoli Red. Okay, so for the purposes of illustration here, we decided that the, the chrome yellow was going to be sort of our base color. And so we can have a whole bunch of different versions of this yellow at exactly the same value just by bringing these things together. So if we just start... Now sometimes the colors will um, darken a little bit when you mix them depending on where the pigments come from. And there we go. Like I said, those two are very, very similar. And they look like they're a little bit dark. Remember, I'm still going for this one. Now we can decide how much bluer or greener or more yellow these colors are going to be as we go. Did I do that one yet? I don't think I did. See how that one got darker? That's that sap green. Sap green is a mixture of colors and um, it always gets darker when you mix it with stuff. And I'm trying to lean all of these towards the yellow that it started with. So, 
Let's see. Ultramar we, we did ultramarine blue. Let's do Prussian blue. So what we're doing here is we're, we're just showing you how to make variations on a color very simply and not really lose the value relationships that you're going for. And this was, I don't even remember what that was. Let's get some Pozzoli Red in there. But having these grays out really helps because whatever value I'm trying to mix, I can just continue to look at it and know that I'm on the right track. And see the difference between these yellows? This one could probably use a little bit more white. That was the first one I did. So this one's a little bit this one's a little bit more orange as it should be. This one's a little bit greener. This one's a little bit duller. This one's greener. Um, that one's a little bit duller. They all have their own identity, but they're all related to that original color that we started with. And from here we can add, if we want like this one to be more yellow because it's, it's a little bit too much green. Orange Molly date. Throw some yellow in there. Or throw some Molly date into the yellow. Keep things on the warm side. So were you to plug all of these together, you'd end up with something with a lot of color complexity. And we did, we just mixed up a bunch of variations very, very quickly. Uh, if you're painting on the fly, you're gonna be able to hit, once you get to here, you're just gonna be able to make variations on each one as you go. And the idea behind compressing things is that this is the lightest color you're allowed. So everything here is at that same value. This is your middle value, that's your dark value. Maybe this should be a little bit darker. Right now it kind of seems like it could, we could play around with it a little bit. Um, but that's good for this value. I'm gonna to move to a middle value and then come back. All right, so round two in our compression exercise, I'm gonna take this Prussian blue because it's just an awesome color and I'm gonna mix up a nice big batch. And it's pretty strong. And I'm gonna make it the value of one of those middle values. shooting for this one right now. It needs to get a little bit lighter. So the last one we did was the lightest color that we're going to be using in that particular scenario. This is going to be our darkest color in the middle painting. All right, it's hard to tell exactly how close it is right now. Let me do a check.
looks like the blue is still a little bit too dark. That should do it. Yep, it's gonna do. Okay, so from here, now we have all those other colors and we can start trying to match. Now we have a yellow ochre that's too light. So I'm going to go back to Armenian gold. Oops. Things are getting messy. But at certain values, you're going to have limits on which colors you can use. Um, at this value, yellow ochre is a little bit too light. The gold ochre is a little bit darker. Looks like it's going to work, but I know that you probably don't have that color. So that's going to be good. Um, but if I go with, say, a violet, I think this is dioxine purple. It's not a color I use a lot. I just grabbed it because it's dark. All right, so we're just, again, we're trying to make sure these are all the same value. Soli is pretty much the same value out of the tube, that's right. Maybe a little bit lighter. So if it's only red out of the tube, that one's pretty good. Tiny bit of white. What other colors did I have out here? Well, I have sap green, which is going to be another good one because it starts out very dark. Does that look light? Yeah, maybe it's a little bit light. Let's bring it back down. All right, so that's pretty good. So we have Prussian blue, and we mix it with this guy. So that's nice. We could still let the blue dominate, but it just takes on a slightly different feel. And here I'm just doing simple mixes, but when you guys do this, you can also use your original color to mix in and, and dull it down at the same time. So I'm gonna forget about that because that's too light. If I need a slightly more violet kind of a color. It's like that's a little, getting a little dark. A lot of these violet uh, colors are not pure. So 
So that looks really cool. And these are, I use this combination all the time. The uh, Pozzoli Red and Prussian Blue are very, very close to being complements. So they knock each other down. Whichever one dominates just becomes a slightly duller version of itself. And it looks like our value is still strong. So that looks cool. Let's bring in that green. So the values, because this was a darker, more of a middle value, the values, when we mix them together, they stayed much, much closer in value without much trouble. Whereas when we did the lighter one, they were shifting all over the place. So even with just um, one, two, three, four, five colors, you can see the, the, the huge range and sort of complexity and sophistication that we're getting out of this, these color combinations. This is just doing it with one color. If you did this with every color, at whatever values you're using, there's just, there's no end in All right, our last color that we're gonna do this with is gonna be Indian red. And all, a lot of Indian reds are very different from each other. This one is a particularly dark version uh, from Old Holland that I've been using for a long time. And I want to try to make sure that it's the same value as one of these guys over here. So it looks like it's a little bit light. All right, so we're going to try and match it to this one. I know that's really similar to the, to the last value that we did, but I want to do it with red because we did yellow and blue. I want to do red. Okay, so if that's the color we're shooting for and that's the value you were going at, we're just going to need a bunch of colors that are going to be the same value. So if we start with, let's say, a phthalo green, it's already pretty close to the value we want. Let's make it a little bit lighter. Maybe a little bit too light. There we go. That's pretty good. Now if we do purple, again that's too dark. Let's make that adjustment. Prussian blue. Right on the money. What else do I have out here? I have an alizarin crimson. All these colors are colors that start out dark so that when I try to make them this value, I have more room to do it. Um, the quickest way to ruin the value that you're trying to develop in a painting is to bring in colors that aren't that value. So if we went with any of these regular brighter yellows, they're just not gonna be dark enough 
they're just gonna destroy whatever value we're trying to set up. So we're kind of limited when we get into these darker colors. We're limited to, we're limited to these colors that start out dark. Um, but we can bring in a brown. I mean, that's what, that's what yellow is in the dark. We could bring a brown in easily enough. Let's see what else. Yeah, that one, that one, Prussian blue, ultramarine blue. I'm gonna give that one a try. It's like it's a little bit light. Okay, so that's probably good. We don't have a brown. Let's, let's use, uh, I have some raw umber that happens to be here. Let's use the raw umber and adjust its value. Very good. Okay, so now uh, we're going to compare everything we've got to the Indian red. And we're going to let the Indian red dominate. So. We'll, put, or we'll mix them up wherever we can. We'll put them over here. I have room for that. I do. And of course, if you guys have any experience with Indian Red at all, you know that it dominates every mix that it's in anyway. So raw umber is very weak by comparison. So I know that the Indian red here is going to yield the most subtle of the mixes that we're going to get. So I'm hoping that we'll actually be able to see them in the video because they're going to be very similar to each other. I can tell that one's going to get darker. All right, so we have to adjust this one. Do we? slightly. Right. This one looks kind of dark too. Very similar to the ultramarine one. That one looks a little dark too. When you mix a uh, something like phthalo green in with something like Indian red, you're, you're going to get a very, very dull color. And it turns out it's not that different from mixing uh, any of the blues into it. Let's see. What was the last one? We haven't done purple yet.
Right, so that's really some really awesome colors and some really beautiful color complexity right through here, all based on Indian red and basic variations on it. Now, if we were to have a painting that, that then is differentiated further by a value like this that's a little bit lighter and a value like this that's even darker, or something even slightly darker just to have a bit more difference, maybe that's even better. You can see how, how rich and complex you can still maintain the color, do all the painting that you want to do, and just because there isn't a lot of value contrast, you're not losing out on a whole lot. Not in terms of the potential of the color that you get to use. You're missing out on some of the, the drawing information is going to get contradicted by the space that you're able to, to, to explain through your color. And that, that could be a potential problem. But hopefully you'll more than make up with it with the complexity of your color.